Woohoo! Guys, great guys, how's it going, my boy? <laughs> um, brilliant, brother. How about you, my man? Yeah, but I'm really good, man. Really good. Super excited to speak to you today on our Superhumanship episode, off the back of our chat last week with Joe Van Niekerk, who is an absolute legend of a man, ex Springbok rugby player, world class athlete, and he's now working and running a healing sanctuary in Costa Rica. And we took so much from that chat. Joe holds this real incredible space um, these days. And, you know, one of the things that we really noticed about him is that he just does everything with such a massive open heart. Mm. And it was incredible, Craig. Like, even before we spoke to him on the podcast, there was a few interactions back and forth. Uh, like over WhatsApp on audio message and stuff. And he just like, it was so empowering the way he communicated, you know, like just saying, Hey brother, how's it going, man? So great. And like, you know, he had finished with big love and many blessings and stuff. And it was just like, it, it, I just felt like massively empowered, you know, like by this guy um, and his kind of like the space he provided, you know, um was just it, incredible you know what i mean he like made me feel like i flipping could you know reach for the stars just purely through the space that he provided because he was showing up with so much love and i think that is just like it's it's amazing you know and such a good thing for many of us to to do more of because you know if if i can feel like that um from another guy you know, it's, I mean, we can all feel like that, you know, it's just, uh, it's truly incredible. And um, yeah, it's, uh, you felt it as well. I'm sure like in the chat, you know, there was moments you were like, wow, this guy's like very, very powerful. Hey, Craig. Yeah, totally. It just holds this incredible heart space, as you said. And it's so wonderful to be immersed in that uh, space of, of caringness, if you want to call it that, you know, it's just, you, you really do feel it. And it's definitely sort of nudged the goalposts for me, you know, as you said as well, like this is, this is how you want to be more around people because you, they, you're making yourself feel good and others feel good. And I think, man, if we could just do more of that in our lives, we, we in a, we in a better place. And, you know, it didn't just happen though. You know, Joe's really put a lot of hard work into his, his life and the way of being, and he's put a lot of thought into this and a lot of hard effort and it, it didn't come easily. And, you know, he's, he really opened up and, and shared with us, you know, he's the hardships that he had been through and, but through these things, he's as people that are sort of, let's call them sort of enlightened. They, they, they understand that the journey that we're on and we're going through is, is all part and parcel of the growth process and not separate from it. And I think, you know, he's yeah, this heart space that he's created now also was off the back of the, you know, the death of his father, which was really hard. And he really took this really hard, but he also understood that the, there's a long view of our soul, if you will, as, as you know, in the terms that, and energetically that hard times and unbearable things can really open up our hearts, crack the heart space open. And the reason is it makes you really feel, you know, you really feeling devastatingly hard things makes almost creates a connection to that heart space. And I think he really, that was sort of part of his impetus to go on this journey, even though for a long time, it wasn't really obvious that that's what it had, had happened. And in our world, this is sort of the other thing that we had taken from the conversation was we're not always given that space to really feel our emotions or we, we feel like we're not necessarily allowed to really go there with hard emotions. Number one, it's hard for ourselves to sort of look there. And, and also sometimes it's hard for other people to see you there. You know what I mean? And, uh, but I think it's, we think it's super important to actually to embrace those things because they really are part of the human experience. And uh, you know, we, we don't, the way we deal with them is, is sort of often just behind closed doors. And, and as we know, and we've spoken about a lot on this podcast, that in the end manifests in a negative way, doesn't it, Gareth? Yeah, it does for sure, Craig. And, and the, the part of his story, which kind of highlighted all of this was 
like you mentioned, when his dad died, you know, it was like such a painful time for him. Uh, but in that time, he wasn't necessarily able to feel the emotions for long enough. And he has the most amazing mom and his mom like just kind of, you know, took him right under her wing and said, come, we're going to go do this. And she helped him, you know, amazingly. And, uh, you know, sent him to the school that he goes to now and, and all these sort of things to help him out, to help him get over the fact that his old man had died. But now looking back on it 20 years ago or 20 years, you know, when it happened 20 years ago, he feels that it probably would have been a good thing to really let those emotions sit and to feel that pain for longer and to be able to cry about it. Uh, because if he was able to do it then, then he wouldn't necessarily have held on to the trauma that he hold, held on to for 20 years without actually even knowing about it. And I think this is something all of us do in this day and age, Craig. We, we don't actually like have a good cry when we, when we should have a good cry. You know, we've kind of like, I don't know, we've almost become desensitized uh, because of all our kind of surroundings and whatever, like to certain things. You know, like you watch a movie and like 10 people get killed in it and you're like, oh, that's okay. That's kind of normal. And, and this, that's actually not normal, you know, like to, <laughs> for people to get shot and have their heads blown off or whatever the story is, uh, this is not normal, but we've become used to it. So we have these like hard outer shells and exteriors. And, you know, the, we really need to, in a way, uh, soften up a bit more and, and actually be able to feel these things because, I think that's what really one of the essences of being humans is, you know, is to, to just feel whatever it is. Like it doesn't have to be a negative feeling. Like it can also be like a real happy feeling, you know, like, like really feel happy, like feel joyful, you know, like give your mate a massive hug and hold on to, onto it for an extra second. You know what I mean? Or dance like just dance and go crazy like in your bedroom or something like let's feel the emotions let's like not move on to the next thing let's take it a little bit slow in the moment and um you know that's uh, i think a very empowering thing if we can do that um so yeah i mean and then the other thing craig which which kind of just like was so obvious uh after speaking to joe and the importance of it is uh, treating your body well, you know, treating it like a temple. And, you know, uh, also, I guess, like you mentioned now, you know, becoming enlightened. And that just kind of, I think, means, you know, on a more practical level, just kind of realizing who you are, becoming more self-aware. And once you start doing these things and becoming more self-aware, like your your world really starts opening up. And And he terms it so nicely, like, you know, by cleaning the vessel and that then allows you to kind of start taking the next steps doesn't it Craig? Totally Gareth and I think part of cleaning the vessel is being allowed to feel as you were mentioning earlier you know you if you have this massive disconnect from head versus heart body mind you know these are spiritual world you know real world kind of thing whatever you want to call it we have these big divides and we often feel that they entirely separate in our worlds and when we start to really go inside and as you mentioned you know who are we what are we Where, why are we here that's a real personal thing right and that part of that enlightenment is feeling more and to do that we have to be a conduit for that that information coming from from the from mother earth from the from nature from the universe and so that things just flow through us easier and also we find more ease in our lives. And part of that sort of inward journey with the door opening outward, so to speak, we need to actually start with our physical body and just cleaning that out. And there's different ways people go about this. You know, you can see it from a, people talk about detoxes and things like that. And on the one hand, you've got the image of, you know, uh, someone trying to lose weight and then there's a genuine like detoxifying of your cells, of your body, of your mind. And, and that's, that's a different, slightly different journey. And that's, that's making long-term changes to your lifestyle, to your, 
to your, uh, the, the choices you're making day to day over a long period of time and truly cleansing yourself from the inside out. And it's crazy because we have so many things that numb us, isn't it, Gareth? We have like booze and cigarettes. And we were actually talking about this before this conversation, how during this lockdown, you know, people have been stressed that they haven't had their booze and stuff. And, and this is just one of the examples of, you know, we, we want to find things that take away the reality of what we're feeling. Uh, and one of those things is, is drinking. And, and, and so what Joe had done is he, he made this massive decision to really detoxify his temple and, and treat it as a temple again. And when, you, when one starts to do that and make these changes, you really do start to feel very differently and feel more actually which can be sometimes tough for people to sort of comprehend. And, and that's what we have to come to terms with, as you were mentioning. And there are other tools too, aren't there, Garrett, that we sort of can start to lean towards and, and look towards for, for cleansing that vessel, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, Craig. And just to stay there for like a couple of seconds, I think one thing you said is like you, you actually start feeling who you are, like after these kind of cleansings or detoxes, or whatever you mean. And, and, and that's kind of interesting in its own right. Like we kind of, we have all these like inputs into our bodies, into our minds, into our systems. And they kind of, they make us like operate as if we're kind of like not who we are, you know? And what, what I mean is like you, you have coffee and it, it, you know, provides you with caffeine and then you have the booze and you have the cigarettes and you have the, the food that's all processed and you have all these things. And you're not basically, you know, this is not really me. These are all kind of these other substances, which are kind of like, uh, making me go, you know? So like when you do start detoxing, you start feeling like it can sometimes be, you know, like you don't feel great when you go through a detox because you're like, whoa, your body's all adjusting and stuff. But then once you get through all of it, you actually start really feeling who you are and like what it's actually meant to be, to be kind of normal. Um, so the other things that you're mentioning, Craig, I think, uh, you know, like, stopping coffee we've spoken about this before we both tried last year for a while and that was great um mm. and uh joe for example went on a 21 day drinking fast like you know that's pretty hectic but like he, he it was for him the biggest discovery that he had about himself was actually doing that fast and it wasn't just because he lost 21 or not i don't know what the weight was but it was like 20 kgs or something mm. um 10 kgs was a lot um but it was also kind of how it started cleansing his mind and how he kind of started realizing certain things. Um, also changing your diet, you know, rather than eating, say, tons of meat or, or processed foods or whatever the story is, uh, change your diet, put in more veggies, start drinking more water, cleanse your, clean your, cleanse your body like in, in good ways and start... Um, yeah, just feeling good again. I think there, there, there's many ways. And then the other one, which is really powerful and we feel needs to be spoken about more, which Joe spoke a lot about in the conversation was plant medicine. And we feel super fortunate because we have a platform where we're able to talk about things, you know, which kind of like, I don't know, it's weird that plant medicine is kind of almost kind of taboo, but I think it's probably because it's not understood. And we spoke a lot about it. And um, Joe was like the sort of biggest advocate for this. And the said it was like provided him with massive life changes, didn't it, Craig? Totally, Gareth. And I think Joe speaks for a lot of people, doesn't he? Uh, including ourselves that had some experience with these so these uh, medicines basically and I, I sometimes wonder if that's the right word just coming from you know the, the but there is there's a healing there's a certain uh, medicine effect to these things and it's not just physical it's mental it's spiritual it goes way beyond uh, just one or the other kind of thing and there's you know joe really spoke about the reverence that is so important to hold for these medicines if you will and the thing is that, as you said, Gareth, often they're misconstrued. You know, there's a certain stigma that's evolved over time. And I think it's just from a lot of times from people that haven't been down this road and haven't treated it in a certain way that is so important with these medicines, like in the, the set and setting and with maybe with a, sh with a shaman or with a, someone that's guiding you through these ceremonies. 
And what they really do is they're just removing some of that ego, which creates these boundaries between us all. And what I, what I think is so important, there's boundaries between mind and heart. There's boundaries between us and nature. There's boundaries between one another. And these medicines help us to dissolve some of these boundaries so that we can connect deeper again and really feel again and feel that deep sense of gratitude for for one another and for being here and for nature and these things. And these are all great things to feel, you know, there's, there's, there's very little downside to that aspect of these things, you know what I mean? Of these medicines. And it's, it kind of gives us another place of where we are in the world. However, once again, when we start talking about these things, we, we live in a world where generally speaking, they're illegal, you know, as it currently stands. And it's a strange thing because Gareth and I often, think well these are these are just as you know uh we just want to speak about these things just like we would speak about anything else but you, you start to feel that little bit un, uneasy about certain things and that's just because of the the censorship the 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 world we live in isn't it gareth yeah for sure craig i think it's i think it's like you said it's the the censorship of things but also kind of maybe the judgments you know and and if i can just mm. kind of maybe finish off with one of the big lessons that Joe taught us that we have just sort of touched on already is the importance of speaking from the heart, which also means, you know, speaking your truth to the world. Now, this is a guy who was a big rugby player leader in his world, captained a team for a long time in France and now he is a guy who is very much so on the healing esoteric side of things. And he's not in one way embarrassed or ashamed or anything like that. He's like, he's like loving it when he talks about what he does now. And he speaks total truth massively from the heart. And this is the world I think we should all be striving towards. You know, we must all be speaking and be able to speak about things that are important, things that are life changing and not be afraid to do it, you know, and also, yeah, not feel like we can't because of, you know, certain things that are censored, which is, is almost crazy in this day and age, you know, like we feel like in the last few months, we've almost gone back a few steps in terms of freedom of speech, which is kind of worrying. So I hope that this is a big wake up call for all of us to come together, to all speak our truths, um, to be less judgmental and to meet each other in the middle so that we can make this world an amazing place that it's meant to be. And waking at dawn, packing, Springbok rugby player, tacky sort of uh, social, um, gone the, the the correct way of doing, uh, uh, gone the correct way. Of, uh, fuck me, man. I'm sorry. I'm just going all weird there. No worries. Like, just to kind of like finish it off, you know, like, ah, fuck. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. I don't know what I wanted to say. Uh -huh, I wanted to kind of just like. <laughs>